Welcome back, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, it's wonderful to see all, all the kids and, and, uh, and all of you here today. We've got a great speaker today. Uh, first and foremost, let's welcome our guests. And to do that is the ever popular Diana Davis. <laughs> Okay, it's an awful lot of good-looking kids in the audience today. All right, I'm going to call out the visitors and have you stand so we can give you a warm Kiwanis welcome. We're so glad to see all these young leaders from Willis Middle or Elementary School. And I'd like you to think a couple things here real quick. Look at your badge. Look at your badge. Does it have the name of your company on it? No, it just says what your profession is. That's how Kiwanis started. There were one person from the four business districts of Detroit that were chosen, not just showed up, they were chosen to be members of Kiwanis. And those four people in that category were the only ones that were allowed in. And that was a standard thing until in the late 70s. That we only had one person from one profession in, Kiwanis, in a Kiwanis club. And that's why you have nine Kiwanis clubs in Bradenton, because you have other areas that have business districts. And that's why Kiwanis got started, because they were trying to build companionship and networking skills and all that stuff together. Believe it or not, the first United States um, Chamber of Commerce was started by President Taft to try to go against the unions had nothing to do with fellowship or work or anything of that nature. So we're working our way up to what Kiwanis is and why it got started. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. And uh, every week we try to do a little bit of Kiwanis history. And so um, in the coming weeks, we'll be, be kind of charting our course and how we got to where we are. Um, I want to Thank you all so much for um, Willis for being here. I want to specifically thank um, the advisors. Uh, they don't get paid a, a dime extra for what they do. It's so important that we have uh, uh, student uh, adult leaders who are willing to step up and to set the example. Um, so Phyllis Morales, Emily Ross, and Steve Sajewski, would you please stand up? We'd like to recognize you. I think we are ready for the announcement of our speaker, and here is your president-elect, Brett Pollack. Well, good afternoon. Uh, the speaker today is a, I can call her a friend, working in the fire service. Uh, Dr. Bincy and I uh, did a lot of things out there um, to try to help the health and, and welfare of Mantee County. So in August of uh, 2009, Jennifer Bincy became the county health officer for the Florida Department of Health in Manatee County. She oversees a staff of 125 personnel and a $10 million budget. The agency is involved in many popular, or the population of health initiatives, including uh, website, uh, web work health, school health, environmental monitoring. Dr. Bincy also uh, also is the, man, the health medical chairman for the Southwest Region 6 Domestic Security Task Force. That's a mouthful. Um, she's previously served as director of um, Division of Emergency Medical Operations with the, with the Florida Department of Health in Tallahassee. The division oversaw the state health and medical preparedness system, as well as trauma centers and EMS. Including the federal grants, the division budget was approximately $200 million. In her almost 20 years of serve, service with the Department of Health, Dr. Bensey has also served in leadership roles in health departments such as in Orange County, Seminole, Miami-Dade, and Bay Counties. Dr. Bensey currently is an adjunct professor at Everglades University and a former professor at Florida State University's College of Medicine and University of Central Florida. Dr. Bincy is a board member of the Manatee Chamber of Commerce, Manatee Memorial Hospital, Centerstone of Florida, the Manatee Health Care Alliance, the local Ivy League Club, the International Women's Forum Florida Suncoast Chapter, 
and the Arts and Health Coalition of Sarasota Manatee. Jennifer received her undergraduate degree from Brown University, her medical degree from UAG Mexico, a master's degree in health administration from Central Michigan University at Fort Gordon in uh, Georgia. Her interests, as we know, are rowing, her beagle rescue, and travel. Please give a warm Kiwanis welcome to our friend and former member of Kiwanis, Dr. Jennifer Bincy. Hi, Happy New Year. It's great to be back. I I'm, I'm so uh, miss everyone. I'm, I'm, I'm involved with another group uh, that I'm uh, committed to uh, on Tuesdays during lunch. Uh, otherwise, I would be here, but it's nice to be back today. And uh, also, I have uh, gifts for anyone under 21. Um, there are um, some water bottles there uh, from Tobacco Free Florida, so please help yourselves on the way out. Um, this is my third time presenting here, so I want to give you an update of what's going on, what's new in the world of public health. Uh, there's a lot, uh, as usual, but um, I will try to be brief and uh, condense it because we could talk all day. So the Florida Department of Health, again, we're a state agency, even though we're called the County Health Department, but we have a great relationship, rapport with the county, and I believe... Commissioner Banak is here. Thank you very much for everything that you do to support us. We couldn't do it without the county. Um, our goal is to promote, protect, and improve the health of all the people in Florida through an integrated state, county, and community uh, initiatives. Um, and obviously our goal is to be the healthiest state in the nation. Um, right now, we've got some work to do. Um, in uh, Florida, um, we are currently uh, about 30 seventh in the uh, country in terms of health. So Florida has some work to do, and I'll talk specifically, obviously, about Manatee County as well. But under the Florida Department of Health and working under Governor Scott, um, we promote uh, eye care values. So really asking our staff to be innovative, creative. What can we do to be better, faster, and um, obviously uh, inexpensive in terms of what we do? And collaborating is key, to, and, and that really happens well in Manatee County with all the partners who we work with on various initiatives. And uh, we really stress accountability with our employees uh, through performance standards and uh, making sure that uh, their, their scorecard measures uh, what they're responsible in their programs are being met or um, uh, beyond, uh, beyond success. Uh, responsiveness, again, our customers are number one and making sure that they get the services that they need on a timely basis. And again, promoting excellence through continuous quality improvement. If any of you are familiar with the Sterling Initiative, it's the Malcolm Baldridge Initiative for um, Florida. That's what we follow at the Department of Health. Uh-oh, Janine, what's going on? Janine? She's it's not working. Sorry. Oh, here we go. There we go. All right. So talking again a little bit about numbers. Um, again, we're a state agency. So within the Florida Department of Health System, every county has a health department. Um, so statewide, uh, we have downsized in the past uh, five years. Um, the legislature wanted us to move away from primary care and give that to the federally qualified health centers, which we have obviously uh, rural health here, and they do an excellent job, one of the largest in the country. But uh, currently, the Florida Department of Staff, uh, Health staff is about uh, 14,000. And we really felt that during um, Hurricane Irma because we're responsible for the special needs shelters. And I'll talk more about that later. But you need those nurses to be able to provide those services. And, and so we're always looking for new partnerships. Uh, the federal, uh, I'm sorry, the state budget is about $2.8 billion. Uh, within the health department here, we're about 100 uh, in, or so employees, and our budget's about $8 million. Again, uh, Florida ranking uh, 30 nationwide for health incomes, and Manatee, we're 21 out of 67 counties here in Florida. So um, we'll talk more about the, the details there as well. If you look at our priorities, we, we look at the state system, which are the overarching priorities for the entire state, knowing that each county is unique, though, in their needs. So if you look at vaccines, health equity, trauma, HIV, infant mortality, uh, tobacco control, leisure, uh, licensure time, uh, those are issues that are, are led by the state Surgeon General, and all of us follow uh, as much as possible at the local level. Um, for example, licensure time, how long it takes for a doctor or nurse, for example, to get a, um, their 
water um, license in the state. Uh, we don't do that at the local level. That's done through a medical quality assurance. So the other ones, though, we do deal with at the local level. We do a county uh, health improvement plan or a CHIP every uh, three to five years. And I brought it with me today and I wanted you to see, uh, you can look at our website also, and it has all of the details about it. It's, it's a very lengthy document. But basically our, our initiatives here in uh, the county include adult obesity, childhood obesity, teen pregnancy, infant mortality, access to health care, and substance abuse. Those are what we're really working on uh, throughout the community to try to make a difference. Just a little bit about um, the divisions within the Department of Health and within our health department. So you'll, I'll go into more detail uh, about these areas. Accreditation, again, as I mentioned, um, we follow the Sterling uh, model, uh, but we are the first state in the country to be formally accredited as a public health uh, system. Florida is very unique in that we have an integrated system where we have uh, state employees at the local level and uh, we report to Tallahassee. Um, in most states, the county health department is truly a, a county uh, initiative, a county effort, and they have local boards of health which oversee them. And it can be kind of disconnected because what, what's happening in one community can be completely different from another. And if you do need to respond to an event, like a disaster, a hurricane, um, they are basically on their own and try to develop that mutual aid as much as they can, where ours, again, is, is completely integrated. So we're very proud of that initiative. Uh, every five years, we will be reaccredited uh, through this uh, a body uh, out of uh, Washington, D.C., called FAB, Public Health Accreditation Board. In terms of public health, uh, really the core of what we do, core public health is known as epidemiology or the study of disease. Uh, so my team is responsible for doing uh, disease investigations in the community. So for example, if there's an outbreak at a nursing home, uh, at a school, uh, we're responsible for working with those uh, persons to make sure that uh, we, we handle the situation as quickly as possible. A few years back, there was a daycare, a meningitis outbreak, I don't know if you remember that, but within 24 hours, uh, my team um, it was able to uh, take care of over 100 people and make sure that they were prophylactic so that the meningitis wouldn't spread. Um, over the past few years, we've been dealing with issues such as Zika, Ebola. Um, Zika, fortunately, was, was uh, much quieter this year than it had been last year. Uh, obviously, uh, you read, though, in the paper that we did have a case here. The first uh, locally transmitted case this year in Florida occurred here in Manatee County. So we're still watching for Zika, and we're very concerned about the long-term effects that Zika will have on those children who were born. Um, with uh, the, uh, the disease. Uh, Ebola, uh, I don't know if you remember that a few years ago, uh, seeing it in African countries. There was a lot going on behind the scenes. Uh, there were five airports in the country where persons coming back and forth had to travel through. The CDC met them. Uh, then they would contact the state and then the county health departments. And my team actually had to go and see uh, these individuals. And we had many of them who were visiting there or have businesses there. Uh, the governor asked that we see them twice a day to take their temperature to assure uh, that they uh, were not coming down with Ebola. And this occurred for three weeks straight um, over a, a time for each uh, individual. So a lot going on to protect and prevent uh, disease spread in our community. We started a commun uh, community coalition recently, uh, the acronym IMPACT, but basically looking to uh, increase immunization rates. Uh, we work very closely with the schools. We have nurses in the schools, making sure that the children um, are vaccinated appropriately. But there's also some new, um, newer vaccines like HPV and others that we want the community to know are available uh, to them. So working very closely with many of our partners. This I, I wanted uh, to put up here. Um, is the list that we hope every physician in uh, the state has on their desk. And if they see any of these diseases, it tells them how soon they need to report to us. So some are within a few days, some are within a few hours. And then also um, there's a document here that we send to the physicians every quarter that shows what the numbers are for the various reportable diseases in our community. So for example, uh, during a nine month period in 2017, uh, we saw 91 salmonella cases versus 98 the year before. And you can go through them in hepatitis, obviously hepatitis C we're seeing a lot of, uh, as well as um, 
the uh, sexually transmitted infections that we continue uh, to try to uh, uh, prevent in our community. Uh, environmental health also falls under disease control. And so um, what we look at here, are everything from the beaches to all public pools uh, to, uh, to uh, rabies exposure. I don't know if you read, unfortunately, we had the second death of rabies in, in Florida, in the country, uh, in, in the last few months here. There was a woman a few months ago in um, Highlands County and a little boy who passed away uh, this week in, in Lake County uh, touching bats um, who were sick. So I can't emphasize that enough. Also, we have problems a lot with the dogs in, in the community uh, not being vaccinated. Please, please sp spread that message. We deal too much with, with having to prophylax people um, out of fear that they could be uh, contracting rabies. Uh, other places that we deal with, uh, tattoo parlors, anywhere there's red bags. Uh, my team goes in and promotes, make sure that those, that's all handled properly. Uh, for sharps disposals, for example, we do migrant labor camps. The only thing we don't do, and I've asked you this before, who inspects restaurants in Florida? DBPR, not the Department of Health, De Department of Business and Professional Regulation. However, if somebody gets sick at a restaurant, then we get involved. Uh, preparedness, a big issue, uh, very close to my heart, as Brett told you, we had a passion for, for um, making sure that we're prepared after 9-11. This really started in, in Florida and continues today um, in terms of building a, a health care infrastructure that is safe um, and ready to respond, whether it be the Pulse nightclub event and making sure the trauma center had what they need to be able to, uh, to take care of, of those individuals or hurricanes. Uh, again, this year um, in... Uh, uh, the summer when we dealt with Irma, uh, my team spent almost a week at Nolan Middle School. That's our special needs shelter for the county. We had over 230 um, uh, clients, if you will, uh, who are either oxygen dependent or dementia patients. Uh, but their caregivers were there. My staff were there, so there were almost 600 people there uh, for a week daily. And again, uh, thanks to Dr. Green and her team for assisting us. But we take over the whole school and make sure that we take care of people. And if they have an infectious disease, they're put in one room. And if uh, the pets were there, we had dogs, we had cats, we had uh, you know just about everybody uh, you could think of there, volunteers. And uh, it, it, fortunately, uh, everyone did, did well and uh, went home safely. But uh, it's something that we do uh, that a lot of people I don't, don't understand uh, the severity of, of that when they have nowhere to go um, and they're not, they're not at the level that where they need hospitalization. Coop plans as businesses, hopefully you all have continuity of operations plans as well to make sure if your building burns down, if you have a problem where your employees can't get to, to the building, where do you set up business? Where do you set up shop? And we, we do that all the time and we can assist you with that as well if we need to uh, help you plan. Uh, again, looking at our vulnerabilities in our system, uh, we came up with the Community Paramedicine Project last year, knowing that there were some issues with persons um, going back to the, um, the hospital emergency room, uh, using the, the 911 system uh, too much and not needing it, uh, and spending a lot of money uh, to, to do that. So looking at new ways uh, to address uh, our, healthcare, um, our healthcare community. Uh, environmental planning, uh, epidemiology, as I mentioned. So we do a lot of these exercises with all of our partners, EMS, everyone, uh, fire, uh, law enforcement, to make sure we're ready for anything that may come our way. We also have a group at the health department called the Medical Reserve Team. And uh, you are eligible if you're interested. Uh, you don't have to be a, a medical provider to assist, but we help out at all of the uh, large events in the community, help work with EMS uh, to um, make sure that everybody stays self safe and healthy there. We also helped at the Callahan Tire Fire uh, this past year, uh, assisting the uh, firefighters who uh, were having issues uh, due to the uh, the intensity of, of what the, the environment was uh, there as they were working. Community health, this is a lot of what we do now in public health, looking at those initiatives that were a part of our community health improvement plan, as I stated. So we are looking at partnerships uh, to, uh, to improve the uh, uh, infant mortality in our community, getting those young children ready uh, for school, uh, that they're healthy through programs like WIC, 
in terms of adults, we have something with the uh, Chamber of Commerce and Blake Hospital called Health Links, and it's an opportunity for businesses to come to with us through a process to become accredited uh, in keeping their employees healthy. And so we work with them, hopefully decreasing absenteeism for them, decreasing their health care costs, and keeping their employees uh, obviously healthy and ready to work. Uh, a lot of different uh, initiatives in the community for children as well, including something called Safe Kids. We work with All Children's Hospital and many of the partners uh, there doing everything from bike safety to um, to falls prevention uh, for adults as well. There's a, a different group, but many of the same partners there. So just trying to, to get in, into all these different uh, coalitions who are working on a specific initiative uh, related to health. As I mentioned earlier, tobacco, we, we've done a great job in Florida uh, as a result of the, uh, the tobacco settlement many, many years ago. But a lot of that money came here and has been utilized to address uh, tobacco prevention in children. So we have SWAT students, students working against tobacco in the schools. Uh, and we really spend a lot of time focusing on this. Uh, also, with the adults, we've gone to multi-unit uh, housing uh, properties and, and have uh, worked with them to make them smoke free. Most of the businesses, I hope all of yours are smoke free now. We can assist you though with signage, anything like that, and education uh, to really uh, make sure that this uh, continues to be uh, a top priority because it is the number one cause of death uh, in terms of lung cancer uh, through smoking. WIC is a federal program that all the health departments have, and this is for pregnant women and children up to age five. Most people think it's only for the first year, but it's uh, federally funded, and we see almost 7,000 clients per month. Uh, every dollar spent in WIC saves up to $4 uh, plus in Medicaid costs in our community. We have a partnerships with um, 31 stores uh, for the, uh, the cards where uh, the moms and, and dads can buy the food for the children. And uh, this brings in about $5 million plus dollars um, a year to Manatee County through the program. We just uh, bought a mobile bus too uh, called the Health Coach and hopefully you'll be seeing it throughout the community. And our goal is to go to places instead of having the clients come to us all the time. So for example, in WIC, we just had a new site in uh, Palmetto, but we'll be taking that bus uh, throughout the county. In terms of clinical services, as I mentioned, uh, Rural Health, uh, the Federally Qualified Health Center, does most of the primary care in the community. But we're still responsible for, for some unique programs, as you see here. So um, particularly family planning, uh, STD clinics. Uh, we have a Teen Express for uh, teens who need birth control. Uh, vaccines, uh, a laboratory a drug assistance program for uh, persons with HIV uh, and also with epilepsy and diabetes and then uh, school nurses, as I mentioned, and tuberculosis. We still have about 15, 20 uh, cases of tuberculosis in our community every year, and we wanna make sure that those stay well controlled uh, because it, it can spread very, very quickly. So our nurses go into the field and work with these individuals. Um, it used to be daily, now it's about three times a week, but it's still about six to nine months of a treatment regimen uh, to treat those patients. Here's some um, information on terms of what we provided in terms of services last year. So over a million services um, were provided, and you can see the breakdown on the types of services in our health department. Uh, you'll be hearing a lot about HIV in, in the future. If, if you haven't already, we're going to be doing something called PrEP now, which is uh, more of a preventive uh, type of, of uh, measure for those who um, um, are involved uh, sexually with, with HIV patients. Uh, so that, that's coming to all the health departments soon. We work very closely with Turning Points. To, uh, they assist us on a lot of initiatives and of course the Michael Box Center uh, at the uh, Rural Health. So really uh, spending a lot of time doing prevention and education. Uh, we spend a lot of time in the jail. Uh, my team is there almost daily, uh, again, doing uh, different types of um, screenings and then linking persons to care. Uh-oh, okay, sorry. 
Another uh, area, vital statistics. If you need birth and death certificates, we also work very closely with the uh, funeral homes. Um, we are ranked number seven in terms of uh, the, the uh, services, and this is really one of our few areas where we make money uh, because our fees have stayed relatively low and people can order them electronically and they all order multiple copies of them um, that we have been able to, to make um, over a half a million dollars just on birth and death certificates this year alone. Um, so uh, in uh, 2016, you can see the number of births in the county, uh, almost 3,500, and the deaths about 4,000. So again, our ultimate goal is to be the healthiest county in Florida, and we need all of you to assist us. We hope that you'll call upon us if you do need any of our services. Remember, also, we have a travel clinic for John Tucker and his family. If they're, when they're traveling abroad, come and get your uh, shots ahead of time. Also, it's flu season, and I'm sure you've been watching TV and, and reading about the severity of the flu this year. Yes, the vaccine is not a perfect match, but it's better than nothing. So please, I encourage you to take advantage of, of getting that. If you need it from us, please let us know, but most of the... Uh, the uh, partners in the community, CVS and others, are offering it as well. And I'll stop there. Any questions? Let's give Dr. Banks a round of applause. Thank you. We have a couple minutes for if anyone has any questions. Yes. Okay, the question is, what are the top two issues uh, related to children um, and in our community? I'm going to go back to what I said earlier about our being um, ranking in the low 20s out of 67 counties. That's done through Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, and the methodology behind it says that 40% of the health of an individual or a community is based on socioeconomic conditions. So therefore, making sure that they're long-term, that they're, they're not in poverty, they're not going through what we call toxic stress, and that's part of health equity, as I mentioned earlier as well. It, it all links into having that healthy environment to grow up in, getting the proper education early so that they understand and know long-term the health implications uh, for them and their family. So it really starts at the earliest level, is, is education for the entire family and understanding the, the role of prevention. It could be dental services, it's immunizations, but it all goes back to those socioeconomic factors. Um, after that, about 30% come is d uh, d derived from your personal choices, um, alcohol, uh, substance abuse, 20% uh, is, is access to care, and 10% is the environment. So really, again, it goes back to the socioeconomic conditions of a community and really putting emphasis on the future of that child. Yes, Bob. If I were a state legislator and wanted Manatee County to go from the 20s to the top 10 healthiest counties in Florida, what would you want me to do? Ooh, great question. Okay. So <laughs> You're a legislator and you want to help us become the best we can be. Well, looking at the information that I shared with you from the CHIP in terms of our priority areas, um, again, socioeconomic issues and getting those children in, into school early, reading early, um, having that future, the crime, poverty, it all relates to it as well. Uh, but then uh, the, the uh, access to healthy foods. We're seeing obesity in children that, that causes diabetes long term. So really working on that, and we have done a lot. We've actually won national uh, awards for the work that we're doing in terms of trying to bring food into communities, whether it's through a mobile bus or through the farmer's market, but a lot more emphasis on, on, on that issue as well. And that's why WIC is so important, because it, it talks about those nutritional needs that a child uh, has to have uh, to be successful. Uh, the opioid issue, uh, bar none, it's, it's, it's still continuing to uh, affect our community. Uh, we really need a handle on it. I, I think we're moving in the right direction. I was in Tallahassee for three days last week focusing on that. Um, prevention, more, more prevention, more uh, options for people to understand that you can go to non-pill um, 
uh, treatment, if you will. You can use physical therapy. There's other methods to get past pain. And I think pain management is something that we really need to focus on as a community and as a, a state, as a country as well, because it's really uh, sending us in the wrong direction regarding the, the opioid epidemic. Thank you very much. And Dr. Bensi, I would like oh, to give oh. you the Kiwanis Skull Roll. I think you might have a couple of these, Thank but you, you never have enough right. Kiwanis Skull Roll. Thank you so uh, much. To help measure your future success and the Thank future you. success of the health department. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I thought it would be great to, um, to end with two of our Willis K kids who are going to come up. It's always nice to, be, to end the meeting on a, on a high note. And so it would be uh, wonderful if we could have Tyler Patton and Charlie Hun come up. Okay. Do you want, who wants to talk first? Are you talking at the same time? We have a different. Okay, you can talk right into the microphone. Okay. You're going to do great. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Charlie. And my name is Tyler. And, and we are speaking on, on behalf of the Robert E. Willis Student Senate. We wanted to take a moment to thank the Manatee Kiwanis Club for inviting us to this fantastic lunch. We appreciate the hospitality and recognition you have shown to our Student Senate. Next, we want to extend a special thank you to Judge Nicholas for his work with Kiwanis K Kids Chapter at Willis. We're fortunate to have Judge Nicholas attend and participate in our induction ceremony. We appreciate Judge Nicholas for taking time out of his busy schedule to be part of our memorable experience. Lastly, we just wanted to share that this is the second year for our Kiwanis K Kids Chapter at Willis Elementary. In a little more than a year, we have led such community service projects as the Teddy Bear Roundup for Children in Tampa General Hospital and the Pennies for Patients Collection for Individuals Fighting Cancer. Also, we are participating in a book donation drive to assist students at other Manatee Elementary schools. Once again, thank you for inviting us to join you today. We look forward to sharing our community service projects with you in the future. So kids, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think it's very important to recognize each of you for speaking here today. And on behalf of all of the Willis K kids that are here, I'm so proud of you. This club is so proud of you. We're so glad that you are spending your time at school, learning and working hard, but also thinking about what you can do to help others and help our community. It makes us all better and stronger. Um, so Charlie. I would like to give you, you a Kiwanis Golden Rule to help you and your school and Willis K kids and, and um, in your future success. I know you're going to do well in life. And also to Tyler, you have to share this with everyone in K kids now. Yeah. I don't think it'll break, but you can like pass it around. Yeah. And then Tyler, I'd also like to give you um, a Kiwanis Golden Rule to help you measure your future success and also the success of K kids. These kind of activities are the healthy, good activities that will help you be happy, healthy, and rewarding in life. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs> and um, if you haven't noticed, it's just so awesome that they're here. Doesn't that make you feel good? Isn't it great to be a member of Kiwanis? Um, and, and finally, I'd say that's why we felt it was also important to try to sponsor more K-Kids. Um, we thought it was so important to increase the number of K-Kids clubs and to fund that. And so I think that this is living proof of how this really makes a difference and how your membership really makes a difference, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. Um, so finally, I will end by saying um, have a wonderful week. Enjoy your life. Be happy. And thank you so much. Did you guys know you are on TV? Thank you so much to Emmy TV. They're filming in the back. Everybody wave. Everybody turn and wave to Emmy TV. <laughs> I hope to see you, your children, and your grandchildren at the wholesome fi family fun activity with fellowship this Saturday 
4 to 7 p.m. Thank you, J.B. Tucker. Thank you, Lori Fox. Thank you, Don Stanhope, for helping make that possible. Um, let's get to know each other and our kids just as human beings, shall we? We are adjourned.